So now that our mesh has been generated and we saw that the quality of our mesh was fairly good, we can go ahead and add our boundary conditions. Now for this particular uh, setup or simulation, there are two boundary conditions that we're going to consider. There's the concentrated uh, force at the free end of the beam, and there is the fixed support at the other end of the beam. So we can go ahead and do that. First, we're gonna get rid of this mesh metric here. So we're gonna go to skewness and we're gonna click on none. And now we're going to go uh, and right click on static structural, go to insert. And here we have all of our different uh, boundary conditions, forces, uh, fixtures, supports that we can possibly want uh, for our simulation. So we're going to start with the fixed support. And as we can see on the left hand side here, uh, the fixed support wants us to specify the geometry of where the fixed support is going to be. So in order to do that, I'm going to press on the line selector tool up here. And I'll have you guys remember that when I was building this geometry, I only built one of the facades of the beam. And in mechanical, that is where I specified the thickness of the beam. That is why we can see a 3D beam here. But the program is still going to treat this as a 2D simulation. So we still need to, uh, where we define our boundary, our boundary conditions, uh, such as the fixed support and the forces, we need to treat the, the simulation as we would for a 2D simulation. So I'm going to click on the line uh, selector tool and I'm going to click on the, the short end of the rectangle that we built. And I'm going to go ahead, we can see that it's selected because it's green now, and I'm going to go ahead and press apply. And so now we can see that one edge has been added to our fixed support, our fixed support being on this end. The next thing that we're going to want to do is add the concentrated load or the concentrated force at the free end of the beam. So we're going to go ahead and right click on static structural, go to insert, and we're going to press on force right here, the third one down in the green section, not in the blue section. So press on force. And we can see here that uh, force the details of force. Force wants us to spe specify quite a few things. Uh, the geometry, where the force is going to be applied, and uh, what is going to be the magnitude of this force and the direction of this force as well. So we know that the uh, fixed support is on this end of the beam, so we can go ahead and put our force on the other side of the beam. So to do that, I'm going to press on the point selector tool or the vertex selector tool. I'm going to move my geometry so I can see it a little better. And I'm going to go ahead and press on the top corner. Well, if I move this um, move this geometry like so, so we know that the fixed support was on this end. So I'm going to go ahead and press on the point up here. This would be the friend free end of the beam. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as our geometry for the force. I'm going to go here and press on vector. And I the little triangle, we, if we press on that, it will bring a down a drop down menu. And I'm going to use uh, components in order to define our force instead, because it's just going to be a little easier in order to do that. So we want the force to be downwards. So in order to do that, we want the force to be in the negative Z direction. So we're going to apply a negative 5,000 Newton force to the free end of the beam. And as we can see here, all the details has been specified uh, for our force and we have a green check mark beside force here. Now that our uh, boundary conditions have put in, been put into place for our uh, model, we can go ahead and tell ANSYS what results we want it to calculate uh, for the simulation. But before we do that, I'm going to add something uh, to our model that will help us analyze and, and make the, the analysis and results a little more uh, fun to look at. So we're going to go back up to geometry up here sorry, back up to model, press on model up here. And we're gonna go here and press on construction geometry. And we're gonna go ahead and press on path. So now what we can do is uh, create a path uh, on our model. And this is gonna be useful for uh, doing a more in detailed or in, in depth analysis of the results. Uh, what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna create a path along the neutral axis of our cantilever beam in order in in the results section in order to see uh, how that neutral axis or the displacement of that neutral axis as we apply the force on the free end of the beam so we're going to go ahead uh, and add that uh, path at the neutral axis of the beam so as we can see here ANSYS is having us specify the start coordinates and the end coordinates of this path 
So the starting point of our path is going to be at 25 uh, millimeters along this edge here. So we're going to put 25 millimeters in the Z direction. Uh, as we can see right now, it's set to 000, zero, zero and the two points are set at this corner. So uh, we know that the 25 millimeters needs to be set in the positive Z direction in order to move those points upwards. So we're going to go ahead and do that, 25 millimeters. And same for the other point as well, because we want to get the neutral axis of the beam. Now, we also know that we uh, put the fixed support at this end of the beam. So we do want this to be our starting point, but we do know that the origin of our geometry is at this point. So for point one, uh, we're going to add the lengths of our beam to be uh, 250 in the X direction, like so because we want our start point to be uh, at the fixed support. So as we can see here, now we've created a path that goes from point 1 to point 2, point 1 being where our fixed support is going to be, as we saw with the boundary conditions, and point 2 is going to be where the free end of, or the end of the beam where the free end is and the force is being applied to the top corner here. And again, as I said before, uh, this path is useful uh, since Right now, we have it defined as the neutral axis of the beam, and uh, we will see later on uh, where this comes into play. So now we're going to go ahead and tell the program what results or what we want it to calculate. So we're going to go down here to Solution, right-click on Solution, go to Insert, press on Deformation, and, and we can actually we can add anything here. We can add strain. If you want to see the strain, we could add the stress. We could add the energy. Uh, but we're going to, right now, what I'm more focused on is uh, seeing the deflection or the deformation uh, of the neutral axis uh, after the beam has been loaded with the 5,000 Newton load. So we're going to go ahead and add deformation here and go to total. And as we can see here, that the uh, total deformation has been added uh, to the body of our geometry, which is our cantilever beam. Now, what we're also going to go do is uh, tell ANSYS to calculate the total deformation of the neutral axis. And as we, as we did before, that neutral axis is being specified by the path that we created. So in order to go do that, we're going to, again, right-click on Solution, go to Insert, go to deformation, go to total. And now instead of applying it to uh, a geometry selection, we can press on geometry selection and press on the little triangle to get a drop down menu. And we can press on path here. And now, uh, as we can see, the scoping method is path. And as we can see, now ANSYS wants us to specify, since the box is yellow, it wants us to specify uh, what path we're talking about. And if we click on the yellow box here, and click on the drop down menu. Uh, you can see that we only have one path as we see up here in construction geometry, we only have one path. But if we were to create two, three, four, five paths, uh, they would all be listed here. And you can rename these paths uh, for whatever you like. You could rename it for uh, neutral axis if you wanted to do so. Uh, but for right now, I'm just gonna select on path. And as we can see here, the total deformation two is going to uh, calculate the deformation of the neutral axis uh, between the unloaded beam and the loaded beam with the 5,000 force. And total deformation one is going to uh, uh, show the results of the deflected beam, uh, of the whole deflected beam with the 5,000 Newton load. So now that we've added uh, the results that we want ANSYS to calculate, we can go ahead and solve our model now. As I noted before, uh, you can go ahead and add uh, all the different uh, results that you want to get. But for right now, we're only going to do the deformation of the beam and the deformation of the neutral axis. So we can go ahead and now solve our model. So in order to do that, we can right click on static structural and press on solve. And if you go to solution information here, uh, we can see how long it's going to take in order for the model to solve. But as we can see here, that it already calculated it. So we can already go check uh, our results. Uh, it was very fairly quick because the model was fairly simple and there wasn't uh, many elements uh, in our model either. So now in order to check the results, we can go ahead and press on total deformation here. 
And we can see that this is a pretty good result. Our cantilever beam is working fairly well. We can see that the uh, fixed support here has not moved. If we press on play here, we can see that the fixed support has not moved. And as a result of pressing down or loading the free end with 5,000 Newtons, we can see that the uh, end here is being pushed down. Another thing that may be useful to show is the uh, deflected beam versus the non-deflected beam. Uh, in order to do that, we can go up here into edges, press on edges, and we can show uh, undeformed wireframe. And as a result, we can see that the undeformed or the unloaded uh, beam would have a shape that looks like similar to this. And as a result, we see that the loaded beam uh, actually has a shape uh, similar to this. We can see that the uh, fixed end, as I said before, matches up, and we can see that the free end has moved uh, fairly significantly down in the negative z direction. Now, probably the most useful result uh, that we can do is the uh, deflection of the neutral axis. Uh, and so that is why we created the path before, is in order to see uh, this deflection of the neutral axis. So if we go ahead and press on total deformation too, we can now see uh, the deflection of the neutral axis away from, uh, from the un, uh, unloaded beam uh, to the loaded beam. And as we can see here, we have a whole graph and we also have a table here uh, showing that uh, depending on where you are at uh, lengthwise along the beam, you have a certain amount of deflection in the Z direction. And this pretty much sums up uh, this simulation and this tutorial for the uh, concentrated load uh, on, a, on the free end of a cantilever beam. Don't forget to like the video if you guys thought it was helpful. And of course, uh, subscribe because there's a lot of amazing content coming soon.